with the NBA starting in less than a few weeks at the end of this month, I want to talk about five teams that I believe will get better this season. We have some teams who didn't make the playoffs last year, some teams who lost in the first round, and others who I just think are going to outperform what they did last year. Throughout free agency and the NBA draft, many teams have got better, so I want to highlight five of those teams today. Let me know down below before the video starts, who do you think these teams are, and do you think your favorite team is going to improve? Let's get into the video. Now, first off, I want to start with one of the teams that I think is going to be the hardest to predict. Now, this team missed the playoffs last year and had a very bad record, one of the worst in the NBA at 22 and 60, but I think because of that, they can get much better this season. If you don't know who it is already, it's the San Antonio Spurs, who were one game out of the worst record in the Western Conference last season. Now, their win total this year is set at a whopping 33 and a half games as of this recording, which sounds like not a lot, but when you only win 22 games last year, that's a big big difference. Winning 11 more games within one season is a very big difference. So, how do I think this team is going to get better? Well, first off, it comes down to the play of Victor Wembanyama, the superstar of this team. During the first half of the season, he played very well. He was playing very close to how Chet Holmgren was playing, but in the second half, he absolutely took away with the Rookie of the Year award. His play in the second half of last season made him look like one of the best players in the NBA, and legitimately, he could be a top 10 or top 5 player by the end of next season. Now, if he is, who knows how many wins he can drag this team to. Yes, their win record is just about 30, 33. I've seen up to 36 in some places, depending on where you look and where you got it within this offseason. But they have made some moves in the offseason. Nothing too insane, but signing guys like Chris Paul and Harrison Barnes are both going to be guys that you may look at and say, oh, that's not going to be too much of an impact. But Chris Paul, a very good veteran presence for this team. Trey Jones also has played well. Devin Vassell, too, coming back. And Harrison Barnes can be that guy where he's not going to be your first, second, or third option on this team with Sohan, Devin Vassell, or Victor. He might even be behind Chris Paul some games, but he's going to be able to go out there and be a consistent shooter for Victor Wembanyama and company. If Victor Wembanyama goes out and plays like a top 10 or 5 player overall in the league, he could get this team to, who knows, 35, 40 wins. But if he doesn't continue to develop at the pace that we think he will, who knows how well this team is going to do. I don't think there's any way that this team is worse than last year, winning only 22 games last year. I think they're definitely going to improve on that. I just don't know where exactly they'll be. Do they sneak into the play-in tournament? Last year, we saw towards the bottom of the West, it was very, very competitive. But there's other teams that could easily fall off from last year within those playoffs that might not make the playoffs next year. The Warriors were 46 and 36 at the end of last season, getting that 10th spot tied with the Kings for the play-in. Do I think the Spurs could get up to there? I think that would be a very, very big leap from 22 wins this year, but I do think they can at least get around 35 wins this year with the continued play of Victor Wembanyama and the few pieces that they brought in as well, including Stefan Castle, who they drafted in this year's draft, who I think may not be the best player. Um, starting off, he's right now currently the backup shooting guard in their depth chart but I do think he can develop into a good player probably towards the end of the season and can give them a bit of a defensive help which they kind of struggled with last year overall next up I think is the most obvious team who I think is going to improve next year and that is the Memphis Grizzlies last year they were 27 and 55 and had a plethora of injuries now when we look at their win loss record projection for right now it's set at 47 and a half so over a 20 game increase we could see this season and I think this one's more obvious because we know what we're getting with the Grizzlies once they come back last year John Morant only played nine games coming off of that suspension and then got hurt after that Marcus Smart who they traded for in that big trade package only played 20 games and Desmond Bain missed out on almost half the season only playing 42 games last year so getting all three of these guys back hopefully healthy for the full season I think they can go out there and win um, a good amount of games. Are they going to get up to that 48 wins? It's going to be tough in the West. I'm very interested to see how John Morant exactly comes back because guys like Marcus Smart and Desmond Bain, yeah, they were hurt last year, but 
Ja Morant is a very, very interesting case. And honestly, I think is the most interesting player in the NBA right now. Because when he was healthy, he was one of the best players in the league by far. He was making his way to becoming a superstar for this Grizzlies team. One of the best guards, if not players overall. But how does he come back physically and mentally? Because last year, he was suspended. He comes back, plays nine games, but then gets hurt. So it's almost like he was out pretty much the whole entire season last year, only playing a few games. So how do you come back from that? They also came back in the draft, obviously having a very high pick because the team did so bad. They got Zach Eady, who one of the best college players that we've seen in the past few years, um, going out there and winning national player of the year. He's going to be their starting center to start the season. It looks like based on this depth chart that we have right now. And they were missing that spot really. Brandon Clark was in there before, but I think Zach Eady could give them a good advantage. Another guy who is very interesting because how are we going to see him translate to the NBA? At one point, many people didn't even have him in the first round. Now, going um, in the lottery this year, a fantastic pickup for the Grizzlies if it works out, but a little bit of a risk in my opinion. We'll see what happens. It's not like he's going to have to perform from day one. Yes, he'll be the start, but even though as the starting center, he's not going to be the number one option to score, obviously, behind guys like John Morant, Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson, and Marcus Smart. So he'll be able to slowly kind of bring his way in and maybe his play style is not exactly like this guy, but he could play a role kind of like Derek Lively where, yeah, maybe you start as a rookie, but you're not going to be expected to go out there and drop 10, 15, 20 points per game right away. So maybe he'll be able to get in there um, kind of smoothly rather than just being fed out to the wolves like we see a lot of these high rookies go within the past few years but i think this team one of the easiest to predict that's going to get better because with all these guys coming back especially john ja morant i don't see how this team gets worse next up we have the new york knicks who have been one of the most interesting teams to follow the past few seasons as they've continued to get better almost every single season throughout the past few years now going into this season they are looked at as a contender by some to even compete for the championship Going out, Jalen Brunson became a star, some may say superstar, depending on how you look at him as a player this past season. Obviously going out there as well. They've picked up guys within the past year and a half, including last season, and especially in this year's off season, which we just saw with Carl Anthony Towns and Mikel Bridges as well. Now you have Jalen Brunson, Mikel Bridges, OG Ananobi, Josh Hart, and Carl Anthony Towns in your starting lineup, which is one of the best starting fives that we've seen overall in the league in some time. I mean, it's up there with what we saw last year from the Celtics as well. So, and the Celtics went on to win the championship. I'm not going to come out here and say the Knicks are going to win the championship. And yes, they made the playoffs last year. And yes, they won in the playoffs. But now I think they're going to improve and they should with this roster, they should be competing for at least the Eastern Conference Championship, if not compete for the NBA Championship overall and be in the finals. My only gripe with this team is they don't have much depth, but with a team this good, they're gonna get depth somewhere. I mean, they do have players like Deuce McBride who played well in the playoffs last year, um, Cam Payne, drafting Tyler Kolick as well, Landry Shamit. I'm sure some of these guys might develop into decent enough role players for them. Um, Deuce McBride was good. Um, but guys like Campaign, Landry Shamit, those are guys that have proved they can play well in the past, but it'll be interesting to see how they play exactly with the Knicks. As we know, Thibodeau loves to just run the starters for have Josh Hart run 48 minutes a game, so you don't even need a backup for him. But they do have Precious the Chua as well and Mitchell Robinson as the backup center. So I think they'll be able to go out here and obviously have a good season. I think they can improve on that and one of the contenders to become a Eastern Conference champion, if not make it to the finals this year as well. They should be a top three seed in the East at the very minimum by the end of this year. This starting five right here is good enough to win you 50 plus games in the regular season. And that's why they have the second, third highest win total as of right now at 54.5 games. And I think they could get win at least 55 games. I think they could go over with this starting five alone. 
Next up is the Philadelphia 76ers. This one a little more self-explanatory as well. This team itself is already very good. Joel Embiid was on his way to win his second MVP last year, but then got hurt about halfway through the season. That kind of messed up the trajectory of this team, and they ran into the Knicks in the first round. One of the best first round series that we've seen in a while, but with Embiid getting hurt as well again then, there were a lot of concerns for this team, but the upside that you saw from that series is Tyrese Maxey really can be a star in this league. And if you guys were listening last year, I know I'm a Sixers fan, so I was a little biased, but I was really trying to push the Tyrese Maxey star level area and propaganda to you guys last year. I truly do believe that he can be one of the top point guards and guards overall in the league, and he did show that in times in the playoffs last year. Now, with the combination of Tyrese Maxey, Joel Embiid, and getting Paul George to replace Tobias Harris. I think this team could do very well next year. They should also be competing for the East, if not make it to the finals. Joel Embiid by himself, putting up 36 points per game last year at one point before he got hurt just dominating the league by himself. Tyrese Maxey as well. This team, when they were together, were almost unstoppable at one point last season. And we've seen Joel Embiid bring this team to the number one seed in the East. It will be tough, obviously, with the Knicks, who were just mentioned in this video. And obviously, the Celtics are going to be very good again. They didn't lose anyone. And it's going to be tough, but this team is built to compete with everyone else in the East and in the league in general. So this team should improve. They lost in the first round last year. They should be trying to at least get to the Eastern Conference Finals this year and finally get over that hump for Jarrell Embiid. And the final team we have today is my dark horse of the video, and this is the Sacramento Kings. In a very tough West, the Kings went 46 and 36 last season, and they had some good improvements overall from this team. Obviously, this team still has the same core guard of Deer and Fox, but the team around him has definitely switched up a good amount the past few seasons. Bringing in guys like this offseason, like DeMar DeRozan, a very big trade in my opinion, I think that's going to go unnoticed by some people, and maybe some people are overlooking this team, but in my opinion, De'Aaron Fox, DeMar DeRozan, DeMontez Sabonis, Keegan Murray, and Keon Ellis, I think is a very, very solid overall lineup. Keon Ellis, one of my favorite players in the league, not even going to lie to you guys, I bought his jersey. I have a Keon Ellis jersey. That's how much I believe in this team. I'm not even a Kings fan, but he was sparking it last year. 41.7% from three. He was fantastic. He was just a, a guy that could come in, give you a spark off the bench, eventually made his way up to a starter. And they still have some decent bench players too as well. Jordan McLaughlin, Kevin Herter, Malik Monk, some guys that I think will be able to go in there and make a big addition to this team. Jalen McDaniels as well. I do think DeMar DeRozan is a very big acquisition for this team, not just for his play style, but to bring in a veteran presence for this team. A lot of these players are young. De'Aaron Fox, Keon Ellis, Keegan Murray as well, all very young guys still. And I believe in this team. I think this team could very well improve. And in a West that was very competitive last year, when we look at some of these teams above them that finished, the Suns, we don't really know how the Suns are gonna do this year. They're a very up in the air team overall, just because of their big three by themselves. Who knows what's gonna happen if they get hurt? That's what we saw last year. The Lakers and the Clippers as well. The Clippers at the four seed, the Lakers at the seventh. I don't think they're gonna be up there again. I think the Kings team is a sneaky, sneaky team who could improve this year and make their way up into at least the top eight of the seeding. I could be wrong, but I'm willing to take a risk on this team. I believe in this team overall, and they are my dark horse team to improve this year. Let me know down below who you guys think is going to improve the most this season, whether it's your favorite team, a team I mentioned in this video, or a team that I didn't mention. Also, I will be coming out with a video within the next few days, hopefully the next week, about teams that I think are going to decrease in win total and overall value going into next season. Some of those teams I did mention in this video, maybe including the Clippers and the Lakers. Let me know down below who you guys want me to include in that video, and I'll see you in the next one.